Board of Selectmen at the August Board of Selectmen meeting. Item two, Woodbridge Board of Education, Superintendent Gilbert, thank you. Thank you, First Selectman. Uh, it's good to be here. Happy July to everybody. Um, I just wanted to uh, bring you up to date on um, our movement within the building uh, in terms of students. Our sixth graders, as you know, have moved on to the middle school and we uh, graduated them in June. We are enrolling uh, kindergartners in their first year of Beecher and through the kindergarten class. And of course, we have the typical move in and move outs that go on during the course of the summer. So it's a very fluid time right now. I don't have a, an, re an enrollment report for you because it really would not be accurate at all. But I'll be bringing you more information in August at the August 14th meeting and certainly in September after the start of the year. Um, our current, or I should say the FY19 budget, the budget that we have just left on June 30th, um, we are still um, finalizing that budget um, as we typically do at the end of the year into July. Um, our FY19 deficit will come in uh, under the 289K threshold that was approved by the boards. Um, in working out our year-end numbers and releasing encumbrances as we typically do at this time of the year, the overall deficit seems to be down around the $256,000 amount uh, below the 289 again that was approved that includes all the things that we've talked about throughout the year including the 147k of unexpected facility costs um, and the sped reduction of 50k last may um, we are into the fy20 budget year now the july 1st has passed and um, as i mentioned about our um, fluid enrollment um, we continue to watch very closely as the students who are leaving but also the students and families that are arriving to see the needs um, that are unexpected that may come through our door. So um, we're watching that very closely as we start the year. Um, teacher negotiations for the um, Woodbridge Education Association are ongoing at this time. The board has a four member negotiation team. Um, and also it's uh, great to have Tom Handler who's part of that as the Board of Finance representative. Um, and so we've been having uh, meetings roughly once a week with the teachers um, um, leadership of the union and uh, their and their representative and we have our next meeting tomorrow night and um, we're moving rapidly through those negotiations and um, we come to mediation um, a mediation date uh, at the end of July and we hope to be able to um, move to success uh, at that point or before that point um, our Facility uh, work that was done in terms of the HVAC. I think you know I've said a few times that the phase work, phase one work was done over the April vacation. We experienced, of course, a very mild spring and a mild early summer. So data collection actually is still taking place. Uh, Van Zelm and Eric Beach were, were in the building, or their representatives were in the building this week, still taking um, the data and um, verifying. Um, the success of the phase one work that you folks approved. Um, we are hoping to quickly and very hopefully very soon um, get verification of the success of that work so we can move ahead with the phase two work and complete the rest of the building. Um, I can say uh, very happily that I've been having um, Vito, our facilities manager, do daily checks in some of the rooms that were the most concerning last year where we had their high levels of humidity and all that and there have been, been no signs of concern at this point so that's a good thing um, so um, but we're keeping a close close tabs on that and uh, we're hoping to be able to um, move ahead with the rest of the work um, so while, I've, while that's all happening we have a uh, summer school uh, running uh, smoothly and successfully and with lots of kids um, summer enrichment program is running extended day, summer scholars, our special education um, programming, as well as the uh, complete recreation department um, programming. Um, so Beecher continues to be the place to be in town during the summer. Um, teachers um, are still in the building. There's a lot of curriculum projects that are going on as they always do each summer. So there's curriculum work going on in science and in social studies and in math and in language arts as well. Um, the Woodridge Board of Education will be meeting this Monday, um, July 15th. Um, this will be the first meeting with our new members. We'll be having board elections and electing a new chair, vice chair, and secretary. Um, and our August Board of Education meeting um, on August 19th will actually be replaced by a Board of Education summer retreat with a representative from CABE coming to provide guidance and support to our new members on their roles and responsibilities. 
our administrative team um, um, of our principal assistant principal, special education director, and myself had a two-day administrative planning retreat this past week, planning for next year and being prepared for uh, the upcoming school year. And lastly, but not least, be on the lookout for the annual publication of The Bridge. That's the annual report for Beecher Road School that we mail out to all Woodbridge households. And that should be coming out uh, at the end of this week or into early next week. That concludes my report, unless you have any questions. Questions? OK. okay. Thank you. Good to see all of you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Item three on the agenda is the first selectman's report. Um, I have a brief recap of meetings and events I took part in over the past month. Um, last, here. <laughs> last month I mentioned that I attended the Beecher graduation, which was held the same day as our selectman's meeting. In addition, the next day, June 13, I attended the Amity Middle School Bethany Campus promotion ceremony. June 15, I attended the memorial service for uh, firefighter Bob Conniff, a longtime uh, Woodbridge volunteer fireman. It was a moving and fitting, fitting tribute to Bob. On the 16th, I helped commemorate the 100th birthday of Woodbridge resident March Gredinger at a party held at Coachman Square, where he resides with his wife, Marilyn. On the 16th, again, I attended an Eagle Scout ceremony for three Woodbridge Troop 941 Boy Scouts, Thomas Livesey, Andrew Bolton, and Ari Weiner. On the 17th, Mika and I visited with First Selectman Matt Hoey of Guilford to learn more about his town's experience with an agricultural committee. This visit and the information we gather will help inform the work of the Ordinance Committee going forward. Uh, also on the 17th, uh, members of my staff and I met with representatives of the Amity Woodbridge Historical Society to discuss the Good to Great grant, which I understand they have subsequently submitted, and other issues of concern to the Society. Jerry Weiner will have an update for us later in our agenda tonight on all of that. On the 17th again, I attended an event marking the conclusion of Margaret Hamilton's term as chairman of the Woodbridge Board of Ed, and I presented Margaret with a citation and expressed thanks on behalf of us all. On the 26th, staff members and I met with State Senator James Maroney to receive a legislative update from him to recap what has been enacted upon the conclusion of the General Assembly session in early June. And lastly, on June 28th, under warm and sunny skies, we held a swearing-in ceremony here on the steps of Town Hall for the newly elected and appointed members of town government. And with that, our new fiscal year has begun. As we approach our annual budget setting process, which begins in September, tonight I am going to create a new short-term task force whose charge will be to gather information and make some recommendations to help guide the budget setting work of both the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance. As of now, the task force will consider, consist of two members of the Board of Selectmen. I'd like to name Sandy Stein and Mika Cardoso, and two members of the Board of Finance to be determined once I have a chance to consult with Matt Giglietti to get his input. Tony Genovese will work with this task force in his role as Director of Finance. We will expect their report in time for our September board meeting, I hope. Thank you. Something on the line of what you wanted to do a couple years ago, Joe. We're going to try again. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, turning now to our next agenda item, assignments, um, liaison assignments. Um, I emailed Dwight because unfortunately he's on vacation. Um, Amity Regional High School number five is Dwight Rowland. Coupop, if you'd agree again, Joe, to cover that one. Coupop. Well, can you do it now? Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. You, we were on conservation? Did you go to, was that one of your assignments? Okay, thank you. I'm sure. Are you gonna go? You're gonna go? Woohoo, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Economic Development, uh, Mika Cardozo. I will attend the Board of Finance meetings. Um, Human Services, Dwight Rowland. Town Plan and Zoning is Joe Crisco. He's on that currently and he's agreed to serve again and wants to serve again. Inland Wetlands, uh, Dwight Rowland. Library, Sandy Stein. Um, police is Joe Crisco. And I had done fire for a very long time, but I'm so busy. Haven't made a lot of the meetings. So I, I asked Joe Crisco if he would take that on and he said he would. So thank you, Joe. Recreation, Mika Cardozo, Woodbridge Board of Ed, Sandy Stein. Thank you. So that, I think, covers all of them, right, Mrs. Shaw? We went over this today. And item 4B, which is subcommittees, um, ordinance will, 
will be, if you're okay with this, Joe, Mika, okay with you, Mika, and me again, and personnel will be um, me and Dwight Rowland and Sandy Stein, if you guys are okay. And then Joe will, con uh, will continue to serve on the investment committee. So with that, item five, signage requests. I think Betsy's got those, right? Yes. Thank um, you. So the category signage request was in uh, misunderstanding. They do not need Board of Selectmen permission um, to go forward with their sign. However, the road race banner is something that the um, Recreation Commission requests every year. They place a banner on the um, fence around the tennis courts. Is that right, Jane? Mm -hmm. yep. The tennis courts on Center Road. No, um, I'm sorry, on the, the ball field. Okay, on thank you. The, the fence. Center field down there. Yes. There, right? That's usually where it is, yeah. Field. Yes, yeah. yeah. So this is something that, that they request every year, mm -hmm. um, and they're requesting that again. Okay. So the library, we don't need. Right, correct. Right. But the road race, we do because of the, si the, size, the size of the sign. So I'll make a motion to approve recreation's request to put a road race banner on the fence at Center Field along about one uh, race road or Center Road, whatever that is. From, from September 14th through October 12th? In, the, in their memo, friendly me friendly uh, yes, amendment there. Right cool. There. Okay. Thank you. So, you make a you second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, Tony just told me that David Stein has to leave. I guess for another event by 6:30. So, if we can start with you, and then we'll do public comment following you. I apologize to the audience. Thank you. So we will jump to item number eight. And this is related to the old firehouse bid review. And I'll let you want to sure. take it from there. Thank um, you. So um, this is a, a renovation, a partial renovation of the old firehouse, um, primarily to use the funds that we have, uh, grant funds that we have for the project, which is $500,000. And uh, we have another uh, that we're in, in for there. That's the uh, primary use so that mm -hmm. uh, we can use them before the expiration date of the grant that's kind of left behind this particular project. So um, David was able to uh, come up with a scope of work that would encompass the uh, use of those funds. So David, do you want to? Great. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks for being flexible with my time. I do, I do appreciate that, but I do have enough time. But um, so um, the, the goal was to try to create uh, sort of deconstruct the project that we had as a whole, um, which had functional elements within there, but to be able to put enough infrastructure into the building that whatever your function that you decide in the future will be, you have those basic infrastructure improvements already in there. So for example, um, we are changing out the electric service, so that is sized appropriately for uses and the scale of the building that you have. Uh, we are also bringing in and adjusting the, the sanitary lines and the plumbing lines. Uh, for that, we are also doing uh, sprinkler lines that are being brought in so the building would have the ability for being fully sprinklered. Um, so that main entry service is brought in. All of that sort of backed into your $500,000 budget. Um, that, that you currently have through, the, through your grant piece. So it was a little bit of a reverse engineering of trying to see what we could fit in that would be meaningful, that would not uh, need to be altered in the future. So it, it really took an effort to make sure that we weren't being short-sighted with installing something now that in the future you would have to remove or rework and then, you know, that, that just obviously wouldn't be um, efficient with your dollars. Uh, we had three bids that came in, um, and uh, we, the bids range from $498,000 <laughs> um, up to eight hundred and um, so with the, our second bid was $577,700 uh, to the, the highest bid or the third bid at $858,000. So we expected the range was going to be between five hundred and six hundred thousand. and $600,000. So those two numbers was right in the range that we expected, and 
the third number, I think, was sort of looking at this as, um, you know, just a f relatively short duration project, because as we sit here in July, um, the goal is to have all this work uh, completed by Thanksgiving, yes. essentially, is when we want right at the tail end of when that grant needs to be fully closed out. And that means that financially, the contractor's been paid, we've closed that out, right. all warranties are in place. Right. So, right. so that, that also takes some time. Um, Cronenberger uh, and Sons Restoration is the apparent low bidder on the project. We've scoped them out. We've had work experience with them before. They're located out of Middletown. They've done a ton of work. I think they've actually done some work at the church across the street and in town before because they are a restoration company, historic restoration company. They've bid on this project. This is their third time bidding on this project. They yeah. were the apparent low bidder, so he was very excited that he was here again. I think that was reflective of why he is the low bidder is because he knows this building pretty well from the three times that he's bid it and been in that. Um, so calling him and saying, okay, now we have a job. We need you to get started. Um, he um, quickly went to his subcontractors that he's contemplating using and felt that he could start around uh, mid-August, around the ninth, the week of the 19th, and feels that the project is about a 14-week project, which brings us in right at Thanksgiving time. So um, we, we've already issued, I think you may have a copy of it, a, a recommendation letter that they are qualified to do the work. And um, based on my con conversations as late as this afternoon with, um, with their Vice President Brian Addy, they're ready to ready to go. Um, it's really barring any material order issues is really it, although we don't have product that has extremely long lead times with except for one or two of the mechanical units, but those are usually 10 week lead times. So I think if we start now and issue them a notice to proceed, we're you know right in position to do all that, to do all that work. Um, the project has already been reviewed by Terry Gilbertson, so he has an opportunity. He's already reviewed and made his plan review comments. So from a permit perspective, this should move extremely quickly. We're ready to give them signed and sealed drawings and issue a building permit upon your, upon your approval. Um, so that's kind of where we are at this point um, with the project. I've got a couple questions in terms of the scope of Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we're so um, in two of the bays. We are um, we are adding we are adding some mechanical work to the building. We are also adding some unit heaters to the bay, um, but this is not a full restoration of all new ductwork because we don't know the layout that it will eventually be. So we didn't want to um, we didn't want to install ductwork that later would need to be manipulated based on the space. Probably the big thing that goes along with the HVAC is the electrical system is now upsized. Yeah. So when okay. the mechanical is added, it has a large enough capacity for that and an elevator. Um, so the elevator is part of the project? The elevator is not, not part of the project, but the, uh, the electric service is um, sized appropriately for an elevator to be installed in the future. Are there any um, wall replacements, like around the perimeter of the? Very little. We are doing some floor um, removals and some wall removals to basically be able to get routing in for for the units that we are putting in there, but not from a programming perspective. We're really leaving the building in its so, tap. So even if we wanted to use a room for one purpose, we're not replacing all the drywall so that it looks doing that. No. No, okay. but it's 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 in it will be in a position that you're able to come in and then do a alteration type project. So this really just enables us to use the money to do some basic system upgrades, but not to really occupy the building yet. Right now you're occupying it from a storage perspective. Well, but right. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so there's there's power parent replacement, but we're not going in when you're saying HVAC. We're not air conditioning no, the I entire building. I understand, but the unit, the unit itself yes. is the heat. Unit yes. Itself. The heat's the, yeah. in the winter, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Tony, more for you than necessarily for Dave, but what's the implication of not hitting the particular date if we, it, I mean, is it we have to complete it or we have to have? You have to complete the, pro you have to have the, uh, the, the invoices have to have been paid to the contractor for the amount of the grant. So, and you okay. wouldn't pay the invoices until the work is done. So the work is done. Right. Have we already had an extension on this? We have, we have yeah. which is why we can't get another. Yeah. Right. Multiple, right? They made it very right. clear this is it. This is it. They'll, they'll take it back. So, so as, they, as David indicated, once um, the use is more clearly defined, correct, then you could then finish the design and for the remainder of the building and then, fun, you know, determine the funding and the budget and all that. Yeah. So if you were going to break down the scope of the project in like three or four general categories, like you said, mechanicals, meaning the HVAC and things of that nature. Fire sprinkler. Like what portion of the, the dollars would go with each, would you say? <clears throat> I would say it's it's probably divided 25% um, into four categories. And so, the four would be? And the four would be mechanical, sp uh, sprinkler, sanitary or plumbing, and then the electric service. There is a little bit of architectural yeah. work that's mm -hmm. being done in terms of roof patching and, and, and things like that. Um, that's probably about 5% of the overall project at best. And as I recall, sort of, I've seen this many, many times, but were we talking about like a $1.5 million total year or one point nine? Yes, one point eight. About one point eight, yeah. yeah. It's close to two. Right, close almost say two. Say a two million dollar. Two million. Yeah. Right. For the full so for the full million. project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and we had many steps to go through to get to that point. So right, right. I mean, I we wouldn't have made it in time for money. the month right. And we have to use this money there, right? So Correct. So we Correct. Yeah. It has to be at that location. So And in your professional right. opinion, David, what you're saying, if I'm understanding this correctly, the work that we're doing and the investment that we're making is to make the building Purposeful. able to accommodate whatever purpose we, mo we might want to do. So Correct. the structure so is there to determine what you want to do going So forward. there isn't a shelf life on the work that you're doing. Right. You know, these are all items that will be code compliant in the future, okay? Code adjustments are not going to change. You're, if you're sprinkler, you're you're better. So so none of these items are, are, are going to be money that you will um, you will not need in the future. And in the future, it's just going to be the cost is going to just grow exponentially based on just escalation cost and and so forth. So again, in your estimation, the money we're investing would would be money we would invest. You, you would be investing. You would be investing to, it in the future. To finish the building. But you'd be investing more because of escalation in the future. And one and last question: I know <coughs> we got those three bids and four and eight. I mean, do you feel we're getting a good value for four hundred ninety-eight thousand? Yeah, I mean, our original we prepared a detailed estimate to, as I said, to reverse engineer and sort of back into that this number. Fine. So, um, so seeing that our two bid numbers came in that. 500,000 and you know 575,000 those are those are good numbers we are bidding at a unique time it's in the middle of the summer when people are very busy we had a fairly good showing at our pre-bid walkthrough um, this project is a little unique too because it's mechanical electrical plumbing but it's being bid by general contractors so the general contractor they don't have a lot of work other than oversight of the trades of mechanical, electrical, plumbing contractor. Um, so I'm not surprised to see, you know, three. Um, I, 
not concerned. If there was one or two, we would be concerned. But I think three, and we know all three of those contractors. The highest one is Olympus, who actually has recently has done some work for you across the street. So they're all well qualified professional contractors. So it's not like somebody came in, um, you know, out of the blue, just trying to bid on your project. So yes, we are comfortable with the with the bids that we saw. And the electrical is, we were talking about two different plans at one point in time because there's potential that there would be equipment there, um, physical fitness type of equipment. The electrical it, is there. It's well sized. We've, we, yeah, we've, we've upgraded that electric system. All brand new switch gear is coming into it, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, and there's even the back feed information of the generator that was once there. So there's even that potential not sure you'd ever really need a generator there, but there was some infrastructure that was there from the former firehouse that's also there as a, as a future use. Tony, I noticed that there wasn't any, they mentioned that they would use subcontractors, but they didn't mention who they were. They'd asked for it in the bid, but they didn't mention. Is that something that's normal when you, Usually you if manage that? Yeah, and if, there, if there's a, I mean, you subcontract by the GC? Yes, yeah, in other words. Usually it will work through the um, David. Sports. Yeah, so the subcontractor, so this is a lump sum general contractor bid, so so their subcontractor list is not is not no, yeah. is not shared. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, Got it. So the, that's <clears throat> usually the when you're going through a scope review, they may have two or three subcontractors that they're looking at and it depends on their timing. So that's why the scope review to make sure to give everyone the confidence that they could do the work. They went back to those bidders, their subcontractor bidders, and everybody feels comfortable they can meet the date. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. I'll uh, make a motion that we award the bid for the old firehouse renovation to Cronenberger and Sons restoration in the amount of $498,000 as recommended by David. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion or questions? Another friendly Whatever scope of forth. work we have, do we have a we have a, an estimate, right, or proposal from Cronenberg? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have you, you so have your public bid that yeah. was so in, in, in accordance yeah. with the right. public okay. bid. Okay, in accordance with the public bid. Thank you. <coughs> and we second. We seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and now it's six oh nine or whatever time it is. So I <laughs> can't tell. Uh, so we'll start public comment. Hey everybody, Karen Kravitz, 61 Forest Glen Drive. I'm here in my capacity as a member of the Fire Commission. Um, and I just wanted to, in follow up to the conversation that I'm guessing you had in executive session, I just want to reiterate that I advocate you know, uh, that this is a top priority, that uh, action be taken quickly, and that an independent consultant be appointed that can facilitate the changes that need to be made as quickly as possible. Thank you. Anyone else? Is, is, okay. Adrian Michi Smith, 17 and Sonia Road. I would just like to know if there's some kind of a timeline for um, uh, the, the uh, business at the at the uh, country club. Not at this point. We haven't decided yet. No. Nothing else is going. In on? terms of, are you asking about the referendum? Yeah, or? I, no. I was being oblique. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. There is not yet. No. So you know, there's nothing else going on yet. No. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else? Good evening. David Lober, 35 Wild Wild Road. Um, I read in the town newsletter, uh, the first selectman's message, I was happy to see that the last paragraph included the lines, my door is always open, I'm always happy to hear comments and questions from personnel. And 
It's in there every month for the last two What's years. That? It's in there every month for I the last two years. I know it is, right. And you're welcome to stop in any time. Thank you. Uh, well, in light of that statement, um, <clears throat> I had a suggestion for the board. Um, every committee that I've ever served on, with the exception of the Board of Selectmen, and every meeting that I've ever chaired has always had two items which are not included on the agenda of the Board of Selectmen. Those two items are old business and new business. Uh, those two items allow discussion and resolution of pending matters and also uh, promote the free flow of new ideas. And I would uh, respectfully suggest that those items be included going forward. Uh, the second item I wanted to address had to do with the uh, charge of our elected and appointed officials. And my understanding when I vote is that we <coughs> vote for people who will work in the best interest of the town. Now you can debate what the best interest of the town is and there's discussion back and forth. But I think um, at the last meeting we had an item that came up where the board did not act in the best interest of the town and that was the uh, Thomas Darling House where the board went against their agent for the Thomas Darling property uh, in favor of a tenant who had been deemed unworthy by that organization. Um, I was particularly upset by the um, explanation by our town council for the rationale for leaving that tenant there, which was conflating the farm lease with the um, caretaker lease. My feeling is that anybody who is not working in the best interest of the town should not be working for the town, and that includes all employees. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. We'll go back to item six now, road paving. Warren Connors, who's not going to be here this evening, correct, correct. Tony? So, yes. thank you. You've got this. Yes. Thank you. So. Um, We've decided to remove the asphalt application from the agenda and, and address that next month. So that's um, B2. So um, the only item on the agenda is a proposed list of roads <laughs> and um, a contract to, for the milling of those roads. And that's a warrant to start to get that uh, in place. And that is um, in a memo that was sent to you. And the um, uh, contractor's Garrity Asphalt Reclaiming, which is on state contract. We've used them uh, in the past many years. And they uh, continue to be the um, successful con the, uh, low bid that we'd like to use on the state contract. And um, there is no full death reclamation this year, so it's just milling. And the roads are listed on the memo that Warren is suggesting, which is Acorn Hill Road. Peck Hill Road from 67 to um, somewhat complicated. A, a short section, uh, previous yeah. line of uh, Route 67 to the area of House 137. Mm -hmm. Pease Road from Lisa Lane to Johnson Road, and Woodfield Road from Fountain Street to the uh, area of the cell tower. So we need to approve the roads under consideration? No. So we just. I mean, you could if you want, want, but. We always do. We always do. Okay. Always do. I was just wondering because when I make the motion, yeah, if I had to add. Yeah. Right. So I will make a motion that we waive the bidding for this year's preparatory work for paving of roads, otherwise known as milling, I guess. Right. And the roads uh, that we would approve are Acorn Hill Road. Well, let me say this. The roads are set forth in, in uh, Warren Connors' memorandum to Anthony Genevieve stated 7 10 19. Good. I'll second that. Any discussion? So, uh, did you have a question, Tony, about why we're not doing any full death reclamation? Is the, it funding or is it? No, I think just think the roads that Warren wanted to focus on, and he will be here next month if you have more detailed questions on, on this paving program, um, happen to not need full death reclamation. And, um, and it's partially a funding issue because you can you can mill it and put a top layer yes. on and save a lot of money and prolong the life of the road. Right. So that's definitely a consideration. Okay. And these are all, as you can tell, all these are um, heavily traveled arterial yes. type roads that are desperately in need of attention. Yes. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? 
call the question. All in favor of Joe's motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Me. <laughs> Is that it? On that, because we're, it's just milling. Okay. And we did number eight, correct? We're all set. We're up to number nine? Okay, good. You missed, wow, you're on again. Administrative officer's report. Okay. Director of Finance's report. Tell Thank me. you. Thank you. The um, report you have uh, for the year end is an actual surplus of a little under $400,000 uh, and a budget surplus of a little under $800,000, the difference of which is the um, allocation from fund balance that is not necessary this year. So um, some of the highlights, that, that leaves us at a 12.3%, it's a little over 12% of our um, our uh, expenses for our fund balance. Um, and if you look at some of the, um, uh, for instance, a GFOA recommendation is um, two months worth of expenditures, which for us would be higher than 12%. Um, in Connecticut, um, and, and due to other, a lot of other factors, 12% is more than an acceptable amount, but um, there are other metrics that would have it be much higher depending on your perspective. I just wanted to mention that uh, to you. Um, interest income is, uh, generates a surplus this year of $190,000. Uh, we have addressed that in the upcoming budget, so that should be more on target. Uh, the state grants are have a surplus of $240,000. Um, most of that's from a municipal stabilization grant that we uh, didn't anticipate to receive and we received $90,000 in surplus special education excess cost funds, which is essentially covering the expenditures that we had in the Board of Education. So it's not really a surplus, but it's a surplus in, in, in terms of the revenue that we budgeted for it. Uh, the deficit in um, charge for services is $86,000, mostly due to the uh, closure of the pool, which was the majority of that deficit. And um, other revenues has a surplus of $125,000, which is primarily the remaining Amity surplus funds that we have. So I tried to um, outline in here exactly how those funds were used so that you can sort of follow that. Um, and the expenditures, there's um, <laughs> anticipated surplus in the Board of Selectmen $22,000, most of which is from uh, legal fees that were not used, um, outside legal fees, that is. Uh, it's finance department's $38,000. We eliminated a position earlier in the year. Uh, Board of Finance has $37,000 remaining in contingency. Uh, police department should have 20, uh, conservatively $20,000 left, uh, mostly due to a vacant position that hasn't been filled. Uh, human services, again, uh, uh, has a surplus due to, um, and that also is in recreation, uh, because they have part-time wages. Um, oftentimes there is a surplus when all of the part-time wages are not filled or there's gaps between coverage. Um, so those are sort of similar circumstances in both those departments. Um, the outdoor pool we discussed, there's a surplus in, exp in expenditures because we closed the pool of $44,000 to partially offset the uh, loss of receipts. Uh, the library has a, f uh, a surplus also, about $45,000. That's because the library eliminated a part-time book reaper position after the budget was adopted and also had some other staff turnover that caused um, a surplus there. Uh, and um, benefits surplus is about $35,000 due to the vacancies and the staffing surpluses that are mentioned earlier in the memo. So those ripple into and cause a, s a surplus in benefits as you're not paying for FICA, Medicare, s pension, all those sorts of things. Uh, what's not in here is the what Bob's mentioned earlier, which is 30, roughly 32, $33,000 below where we funded the Board of Education. So that would be added to this. Okay. Any questions for Tony on monthly report? So, of the 790 mm -hmm. sur net, the surplus. Right. 
take away the fund balance used for how much of the Amity funds are there? And about 130. About 130. Right. So and then there's another 30 in uh, almost 40 in contingency. That was not used. But the Amity is 132, actually. So that means we had a Three, well, what's 250. that? Three, three, um, 389, one, 250. 250. Yeah. Surplus. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Moving on to uh, 9B funding requests. <coughs> In your packet, there's, um, there's only one? Just one. Yep. It's a, sm it's a, it's a small. Line item sure. transfer. Right. In, uh, you want to take it or you want me to? So you can okay. introduce Light it. Light item transfer number 1920-01 in the amount of $1,400. There's a memo from um, Tony to us to fund the temporary agreement with the Jewish Services of Bridgeport to provide lunch and meals for the Senior Center. And there's a memo attached from Mary Ellen LaRocca explaining this. And it's coming from General Professional Services within Human Services to part-time all other Human Services. So to get get it going, I'll make a motion that we approve line item transfer number 1920-01. Wait, I'm starting off that year. Zero 01, here we go. Right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? How, how much is that? I just don't have that right. 1,400. 1,400. Right. There's, there's a memo from Mary Ellen that yeah. sort of explains why. Yeah. yeah, unless I print them all out, I get them in, in three or four different emails. It's um, to provide lunch so and meals on Tuesdays and Thursdays and to until a decision is made regarding hiring yeah, a kitchen that's supervisor. They haven't chef. hired the, yeah. 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 I just, just to cover to the shortfall. Money we were about. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Country Club equipment auction update. Uh, we have a um, auction tentatively scheduled for the 5th of August. We're working on uh, getting the um, equipment organized, the items uh, organized within the uh, building, and removing those that the town is still going to keep. And um, so that's the tentative schedule, and the fire marshal has granted an extension for that, correct? So that's sort of where we are at the moment. How do we advertise that? I mean, how do we have a company that's helping us, and they're going to advertise specifically okay. to. Um, Target. I mean, general advertising, yes, but also targeted to companies that would be most likely to um, use this type of equipment, pool equipment, kitchen equipment. Um, do you have any other thoughts? Caterers, restaurants, because it's such a wide variety of equipment. Okay. What happens with what we don't sell? It's going to go to the... Goodwill. The auctioneer may take some of it and try to sell it, it's a, but that'll have to be de determined based on like what's, what's remaining. remaining. Yeah, right. sure. So some of it we may end up having to dump. Okay. Can we just leave it there, or it has to be removed? No, um, it has to be removed. Okay. Because, be because it's, we're closing the building. Because you're, you're abandoning the building and because it's a, the fire marshal has determined that we have to remove all... Is okay. it flammable or combustible items? Okay, so whatever doesn't get sold and the auctioneer doesn't take, we have to get rid of. Right. Correct. So are those things that are going to go to our transfer station and then to Bridgeport? How are we doing that? I would, I would imagine what we have what we have to make that determination after we see what we have remaining. Okay. All if right. we have to have someone haul it away for us or if we can just bring it to our transfer station. Or okay. Yeah. But the building will be definitely cleared out. Correct. Um, item uh, 90, other, do you have another other? I do. I just wanted to uh, give you an update. We had a note sale on um, the last week of June. And um, we had two notes that were uh, for si that we had a note sale for. The first was uh, $360,000 for um, the remaining grant funds that we anticipate receiving for the school. And this will just um, temporarily cover that until those grant funds come in, which we're not sure when that'll happen. But um, that was uh, 
Piper Jaffray was a low bid, and that was two point, a net interest cost of 2.0174. So it's just over 2%. And um, this one we won't have to reissue in any way because once we receive the grant funds, then the temporary notes will be paid off. Uh, last year that was at 2.24%, so it's down by about 24 basis points or so. The other is the country club uh, taxable issue, which is $4.2 million. And the also Piper Jaffrey was the winner. This is a taxable issue. And uh, that was a net interest cost of 2.36%. Uh, last year, the uh, net interest was 2.9. So that's about 60 basis points. So it's considerable savings and in interest for this year. Uh, that had three bids. That was the low, that was the low bid. So. This, this uh, as you remember from our dis previous discussions, you have to make a decision um, each year whether you want to continue to roll notes or you want to issue bo bonds to fund the remainder of the project right. or pay it off. But Jerry also got us that. Got us an extension. extension. Otherwise, we would have had to convert right. to bonds. Right. It would have cost us yeah, a lot. Right. And, the, and the, the long term rates were higher, so this, it would have been higher than this, yeah. much higher than this. This is, this is yeah. terrific, Tony. Yeah. How much higher were the long term rates? Before? The curve was, yeah, at least. At least yeah. Probably mid threes at least. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Can I have a notice? Can I use make a question under nine D other? I guess so. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I'm just looking for an update uh, you know, a couple months ago or whenever we approved certain work over at the country club. Tree cutting. The, the flailing of the Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. I'm just wondering where we, we are. We with actually all that. uh the Molly, did you ask, and I gave it to somebody, Adam? I asked Adam, yeah. yeah. He, he, was, he, he told me it was supposed to be done this week. So he's, he's over there flail mowing. And how about uh, trees? Tree. He's not doing it. Tree Both cut. were supposed to be done this week. Trees, too. Yeah. He's okay. not doing that. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, the work right. is getting it's supposed yeah. to be. The trees were supposed to begin this week. He wasn't okay. sure if it would end by this week, but the mowing was supposed to be done this week. Okay, good. That's it. Thanks. Okay. Item 10, Town Council's report, an update on the Darling House. So I just have to update you on the Darling House. I'll pass that letter. As you probably know that uh, the Darling, the uh, Amity Woodbridge Historical yeah. Society retained a lawyer. His name is Dwight Miriam, who's a, a very experienced, knowledgeable land use lawyer. He and I have had many, many, several discussions uh, so far in the last week or so and exchanged a, a few emails back and forth. Um, and he's, all our discussions have been very constructive and I think we're, we're keep moving the issues forward. Uh, basically, the uh, complaints that uh, Mr. Miriam has raised to me is that he, the, the Historical Society has determined that uh, the tenant has constructed uh, a greenhouse, sort of one of those hoop houses at the premises. I think it's been there for more than a year, but I'm not really sure, without getting appropriate permits from the town. And he apparently has also constructed in a barn what consists, what's been described as a room for uh, a cold storage room for him to put the vegetables that he grows in that room. And uh, Mr. Miriam said that they also believe that that was, that was done without the permits. And there's also some extension, some uh, uh, electrical extension cords running uh, about the uh, the property for his farming um, uh, endeavors without permits. So I talked to Terry Gilberton as soon as I received that information, and I said, Terry, you have to go out there and make sure that there are permits, and if there are no permits, you've got to do whatever you do to any other uh, um <coughs> property owner or tenant in the town and make sure it gets back into compliance and let us know how significant these uh, modifications are. So Terry is on it. Uh, I haven't heard back from him. I talked to him, I think, on probably Monday of this week. So he's probably making arrangements to get out there and, and see it. Um, keep in mind, the town owns the property, so what we have the responsibility of making sure we get the property uh, properly permitted uh, and doing whatever we need to do. I'm not sure there is any any issues, but Terry will let us know, hopefully next week. So they're, they're mad. that's one of their big concerns with the tenant. They, of course, feel the tenant should be um, 
asked to leave, uh, and if it's not voluntary, we should start some kind of a procedure that, that uh, requires him to leave. Um, uh, they also made us, uh, have, have indicated to me that they feel that the tenant is violating the lease because he's uh, operating a business on the property, he's growing vegetables, and he's selling the vegetables to the public and even has a farm stand out there. I checked the lease. There's a specific provision in the lease, paragraph 5, which says which we've given him permission to grow vegetables, produce at the property, and we've also given permission to sell it, sell it to the public, including a farm stand. And I remember when this came up about two or three years ago, there was an issue that we checked with the uh, building officials and the building office as to whether he, it was appropriate for an individual to have this kind of a, uh, an operation. And they said it was so long as the vegetables that are sold are not brought in from the outside, as long as they're your own vegetables that you raise on site. There's nothing uh, in our zoning regulations that prohibits that. So he, he, the, the tenant did raise it, and maybe the historical society or society raised it a couple of years ago. And we cleared that with the uh, building office, and that's actually currently in the lease. Um, we continue to have discussions, uh, and as a matter of fact, someone called Beth this, uh, yesterday or today about setting up a meeting. Uh, this person indicated he was uh, representing or speaking for the land trust and wanted to come in no, and talk. Historical, historical society. society, not the land trust. <laughs> historical society and wanted to come in and discuss possible uh, <clears throat> modifications to the uh, agency agreement we have with them and maybe the tenant. I'm not sure, but Beth has indicated that he, she's Absolutely. happy to do it and he's coming in next week, I think. And, I think it's uh, the week after, but week at the after, end of the right. month, I'm not the sure. End of the month. Next week, I'm um, and um, what they, what the historical society wants now is they want to be able to show the property to prospective new caretakers in the in the um, in the hopes that they can get hire somebody new at some point in time. And I've told them that the board made a decision that the tenant could stay till the end of December, but they still want permission to go in and show the property. And I see no reason not to allow that. You know, if they want to do that um, with the understanding that the tenant is probably going to be there for two months, three months, four months, whatever it is. <laughs> so I have to get back to Mr. Uh, is it, Miriam. Is, is there no provision that allows that in the lease? Typically there is. There, uh, there is a provision, but it, this is really <laughs> well in advance. And um, actually, I'm not sure. I'll have to look. But even if there's not, I see no reason not no, to. No, I agree. Them, but, yeah, you're saying right. typically. So I will get back to Mr. Miriam so long as the board has no does attorney Miriam have a copy of the lease? He does. He does. I ask that because I'm just curious why he would write in the letter about the farm stand where if it's that I don't know. I, lease, I, so. I, 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 I don't know. Okay. Um, but there is it's clear paragraph five. You can take a look at okay. it yourself. No, I, and you can I'm not questioning you. You can take a look at his questioning letter. Questioning him right, why he right. would. So I, I think he talked about couple of issues with the lease and that was one of them and I'm not sure that you have to read the letter it's, it's a five-page letter uh, <coughs> and <Did you? coughs> You know, I didn't look at it paragraph by paragraph, but it, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with it to be inconsistent. Keep in mind the agreement with the historical society, the agency agreement was entered into maybe 10 years, 12 sure, years ago. Sure. I don't think it's inconsistent in any substantive uh, matter. That we entered into the lease okay. three, four years ago with this tenant and tenants before him. So uh, I'm not sure what he means by that. You know, I can talk well, to him. I think he's trying to separate out the tenant lease from the farm lease? And he's right to do that because they are separate. There, are two leases. there, okay. there, there aren't two leases. There's an agency agreement right. and there's a, there's a lease. So we have an agency. Right. There's, there's only two, one lease. There's a, I thought there's two leases no. with Schneider. Farm and farm and tenancy. Oh, yes. We have, Schneider has the farm lease and he also has a, uh, the right. tenancy Tenet, uh, at right. the Darling House, right? And the farm lease was entered into this past March with him. And it expires in, de in December. That was what I was saying at the last meeting that while there was no legal impediment that would survive regarding the linking the two together, I felt the fact that we gave him the farm lease. At the same time, we knew he was a caretaker and had occupancy of the property, would be uh, not, and, and ask him to leave, knowing that we gave him the lease, knowing that he 
accepted the farm lease, made some improvements, made, spent some of his own money on the, on the farming operation. And he was expected to stay at the property. I felt that it would be not acting in good faith by the town to ask him to leave before the farm lease was over. Even though that kind of an argument, he would not be able to pr prevail in that kind of an argument, most likely in court. I just felt that it was not the best thing for the town to do, and I didn't want this town to get involved in unnecessary litigation, which is mm -hmm. what we were heading for, and it's always in the best interest of the town to avoid litigation if sure. we can. Okay. So, so following that, my question is this, based on the decision, that's all true, and then based on the decision that this board made, um, we didn't follow the society and we kept him there through December 31st. The society then goes and hires attorney Miriam. Yes. He sends this letter, which I haven't read yet because I just put. In your discussions with him, what what's the purpose of hiring the lawyer? Because you're saying avoiding litigation. What's the purpose of them hiring a lawyer and what are these discussions all about? Because, and then I hear that someone wants to come talk to Beth. What are, are they trying to change our position or are they building a case to sue us anyway? So, that, that's, so that, 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 you know. that, that's an excellent point. And yes. when you read the letter, it's really, and I, I've, I've said to him over and over again, I said, you want, is your purpose to renegotiate the agency agreement? because we know that there are parts to it that they don't agree with. They think it's a lease. Maybe they want it to be changed to a lease. I'm not really sure, but Attorney Miriam did say that that's something we can do at a late, he did say we do it, it needs to be done right now. It's not an emergency, but he thought that that would be something that we could start having some discussions to see whether the town wants to make any changes to the uh, agency agreement with the, with the Historical Society. They clearly still want the tenant out before December 31st. That's one of the purposes. I, my own personal, uh, well, that's that's what they want to do. And he spent five pages of a very well-written, detailed letter, and you can read it for yourself. But I'm not exactly sure, other than get wanting the tenant out, other than raising the fact that he's operating a business there and he should be operating a business, other than the fact that he's operating with uh, without permits, I don't know exactly what else they want. There are things that they want, and this person coming in to see Beth may have right. may may start that discussions. Right, but he does recognize, at least as far as I know from what I've read, they they don't have any independent way of removing him from the property. I think he agrees with that. Yes, right. I don't want to speak for Attorney Miriam, but I think he does agree with that. So unless there's some process that. We all agree to put that before the board again. It's it's a done, it's done. deal. It's done. It's yeah. And that's what I told. I don't say that because I like the done yeah. deal because I don't like the done deal. But I'm just wondering what all this, yeah. what this is all uh, all about. You know. But to that end, I mean, if if Terry Gilbertson goes out and finds out that there are four things and there's some issue with getting these these uh, permit issues resolved, at that point in time, there's reason to maybe revisit things. You could always, if there's some serious, you know, alterations or modifications or, to, or renovations to the property that he should not have done as our property, then I think absolutely then the board has, to, will be has to listen to that. Yeah. The permits will, he'll have to re reimburse the town, if you will, or pay the town for what the He needs to is. bear those costs, exactly. But as Terry told me, and, and which was true, you know, this, if it was just limited to the hoop house, in the, uh, just recently, we had the the couple on at Center Road who, um, right. who, who and we, we and Terry just simply asked her to go back and get the permit because she did it without the permit. So that basically is the way the town treats most residents when they mm -hmm. inadvertently or fail to get a permit. So if it's more than that, then I think the board has to take a look at it. Yeah, I agree. I, w I don't mind taking a look at it again. But the society is our agent, if you will, yep. to run and operate the Darling House. And they apparently, forgetting whether what they think about it, they, they don't like the greenhouse and the, and the selling of, you know, so, so unless we're gonna give some substance and credence to our agent and how our agent wants to operate that business, what's the point of them coming back? 
I, I don't know. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. You know, because I, I mean, don't that's, know, but I, I got a call and I would not turn a meeting down. Yeah, no, I'm so not I suggesting don't. Joe saying, you what do should. they want? What, what, where are we going with yeah. this? Because you don't have to make any changes to the agency agreement if you don't want. And I think the agency agreement was done at a time when the town recognized that the town owns the property. They didn't want to give up control of the property, which I think was probably a good decision at that time, but they also wanted somebody responsible, who the historical society is, to carry on the day-to-day -day operations of the right. as a town agent. And I'm just up until this little dispute with the tenant, it's worked. I think it's worked. Yeah, I'm just suggesting part. that we, we as a board should probably follow the lead of our agent. And we didn't last time, and I don't know any reason why we would this time. Right. I mean, but I know I would, but I don't. Well, Sandy wasn't here when we took that well, vote, so maybe there we, could be a change. The decision was made based on the information that was presented at that time, Joe. So mm -hmm. if there's reason for us to reconsider, then, then it's only appropriate that we do so. I think we need well, to Listen, I, I have no pro I, I want to reconsider. Mm -hmm. I, I know. Yeah. I, know. If I, I understand had a what chance you're saying. To just make a motion to reconsider it right now, I would. But, so. well, 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 maybe we what, should just wait and I see, think, see what Terry finds out. Let's wait and see what they want to talk Okay. It yeah. wasn't clear on the floor. Sure. Right. Put those okay. what, what, one last thing. I think he should pay the money that he didn't pay when he paid the $3,000 that he held in escrow. And he paid by PayPal. And there was a deduction that the society had to... to, uh, to how, much, how much was that? It's like 30, small money. I it was $66. $66. It could have been $66. $66. But, but, he, but the point he, is... He the paid debit was on the, the receiving account side. Right. He, in his, in his, and I'm not defending him, him at all because I do think he should already pay, frankly. But he paid three thousand. He sent three thousand dollars. Right. You know what I mean. Uh, so there's got to be some yeah. way to decide that. But well, in well, answer I, to your I, question, I, I, I agree. agree. Except what's happened in the meantime is he sent his thousand dollars for July, and there was no fee. So he knows how to send it, so that the society won't incur a fee. Did he do so? Did he do something, or did the society do something? I don't know how don't PayPal know. works. See, the way the, best, the, way the, the, the society may have changed that. The, the I, method. Don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know that they do, but yeah. I did suggest maybe we should check that out because it's small. It some might call right. it petty, in principle, but in my opinion, it's right is right, and if he's going to be there, he needs to pay what he so needs to pay. The lease doesn't say anything about paying anything more than the thousand, you know, the, the rent, which is what he paid. No, no, I understand, but when you pay rent, you're supposed to pay rent. You're not supposed to say to me, hey, Jerry, here's my $1,000. Uh, but I'm going to send it PayPal, and you're only going to get 950. Yeah, but they, my, told, my, they told them to do PayPal. It was, it yeah. was their request. I, well, yeah. I didn't but know up until the then, they the, never. Yes, he's not using his own PayPal the way you buy something on Amazon, right, Sheila? But up until then, I believe. It's, they, it's hard to tell, so I, I don't know that. Uh, there wasn't a deduction, to my knowledge, before that payment, and there was, and now there isn't one after. So you use your common sense. I've already used mine. I think he ought to pay the money. And it's a small amount of money, but I mean, we decided to leave the guy there. He said he had the money in escrow. He should pay. The, the association should get what. Why don't we also is. just find out how yeah. the PayPal works? So I let, let's, just see, let's just figure yeah. that out, and then yeah. maybe we can go from there. I think that would be good. In this scenario, I'm going to agree only because the, the, the historic or whoever the, the landlord be it the town or the, or the historical society should have received three thousand dollars. But we're, we're the landlord. The money goes. Tony, so, how is it paid? It's yeah, paid to them for us. Paid to them, and then they reimburse us for certain expenditures. Yeah, right. But it's really our money. It, it, it's our money. That's fine. Even more reason why I want to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Okay, so we'll look into that. Yes. Okay. That's it. Is that it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Item uh, 11 on the agenda, Administrative Assistance Report. Betsy? Uh, so last month I spoke to you about the uh, new brochure that the town has, and I am soon expecting to have them in hand, and they um, will be distributed to our local retailers to start promoting our retail, restaurants, agriculture, and trails in town. Um, the brochure is on the website, um, so hopefully people will start using it. Um, Tony has asked me to st um, start drafting policies and procedures for um, cybersecurity for the town. I'm sure you're all aware of um, the sporadic news stories you hear from spots around the country that have been hit with um, cyber attacks. 
So several months ago, I organized a training for town employees to um, learn about what sort of emails they should be wary of and kind of tips and tricks <coughs> to use when they see things that might seem a little off. Um, and we've been reinforcing that message. Beth sends a memo out to staff and cybersecurity tips and tricks are included in that for all staff to review. And I've also been meeting um, with regional IT directors at the Council of Governments on a somewhat regular basis and meeting with Amity. And um, I'm going to start working closely with Shonda Rosa at Amity. We'll both be creating um, cyber incident response plans. And our plans will be um, sort of reliant on each other because if something happens to Amity, they may be able to hop on some of our systems while they're working to resolve their issue and vice versa. We've also talked about um, once we get both of our plans in good working order, um, going out to some of the other the other BOA towns to see if um, all three towns and the regional school district could be collaborating in that way so that we can rely on each other in case of an emergency. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and the other thing I wanted to make you all aware of is the community council is working on two big events. We've got a community picnic that's going to be coinciding with the library's first summer movie on August 6th. And the movie is Spidey Man into the Spider-Verse, so it should be a, a good one. Um, and the community council is also asking businesses and organizations to submit events for inclusion in Fallapalooza, which is the month-long celebration of Woodbridge that happens in October. And I think this year will be the fourth annual, maybe the fifth annual one. Um, so they're working on some fun things, and Sandy co-chairs that. And that's it. Network security, cyber liability we do. policy. We right? do. Yeah, we have a separate policy. Okay. A couple. Of years, we've had one for about two, three years yeah, now. Good. Yeah. Any questions for Betsy? Okay. Thank you, Betsy. Um, item 12, Communication Director, Grant Writers Report. Um, item A, Authorized Submission for Youth Services Chair. Grant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so before we get to get to, get to that, uh, I just wanted to share with you some information about a um, follow-up recycling uh, workshop that will be held. This is basically hot off the presses. We've got September 3rd, uh, which is the first Tuesday, which is the series that Coopop has been presenting. This one is going to be co-sponsored by the Sustainability Committee. And it's to follow up on the What's In, What's Out recycling guide that we've been, uh, we, we sent out information in the tax bills. Um, now we're going to take the opportunity to allow people to learn a little bit more about exactly what goes in that bin, what does not go in that bin, um, how to be very careful with clean pizza boxes go in the bin, but pizza boxes with food stains need to not be in the bin. So um, there's a lot of details, and there's also going to be uh, some featured information about plastics, how to reduce plastic in your day-to-day -day life, and the speaker on that is going to be quite interesting. We're in the process of updating. There was a recycling um, brochure that's available on the town website. We're going to be updating that so that it has the look of the what's in, what's out marketing and branding. So we're sending a consistent message. So I'm working on that. And then two other things I wanted to mention to you that we're looking into. Um, I attended a seminar at Scrog um, that had a lot of options for recycling and waste reduction, et cetera. As we know, that's a, a driving cost in our, uh, our budget. So one of the opportunities is from a company called Waste Zero that is bringing in uh, another company called Simple Recycling. And they have what's called a pink bag program. And if you've noticed on um, Facebook, some of our surrounding communities have, have gone ahead and started pink bag. It is for recycling curbside collection of textiles and small household items. So textiles that you would not donate, clothing that is not appropriate to donate, old bedding, things like that, that can be used as material for other manufacture processes. So it's a program that does not have a cost to the town. We have to look into a little bit of the logistics of it, um, but we're going to continue looking into that. Um, and then lastly, I'm also looking at um, a system uh, an online system called Peak Agenda Management. I've sat in through a seminar on this. I've, I've received some information. It would help kind of streamline our process here at the Board of Selectmen, might be the original uh, group to try it out. But to make the um, 
dissemination of information a little easier. Um, there are apps that go along with it, that allow you to look at the documents as they come out. Um, we know that we would like to streamline, so we're investigating this option. We're going to see if it would work. So is that agenda, the attachments? Agendas, attachments. Okay. Uh, there's an approval and process on the back end that would help streamline the work that's done to prepare for the meeting. But then the members of the Board or Commission would have access to the documents and eventually pieces of the agenda that belong as public documents would be available to the public. There's a very powerful search feature uh -huh. that I saw demonstrated on a site that has 10 years worth of use. You're able to call up in a matter of seconds every use of whatever agenda item or phrase that you're searching for. So it's a very intuitive system and it would be pretty powerful. We'll have to see if it can work for our needs. And would it be for more than the Board of Selectmen? Um, so peak agenda management, the way they sell their service, it's unlimited boards and commissions in the oh. community. But that would involve training a lot sure. of people to use it. Sure. Um, but it and, and the nice thing about it is it also um, creates Word documents and PDF documents that are completely separate from the system. So if you decided in future years you did not want to be in the system, you've got all the Word documents and PDFs that you currently have. So you, you're, you're maintaining your original system, but you're just streamlining the process of getting the agenda out to people. Well, you'd have a central repository then. Yes, you would. And, okay. and it would feed the website. It's able to be the oh. front-facing public face of it as well. Hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. No, no. I'm just, so when we got our documents for the meeting, we would get them all at one time. Yeah, you'd so essentially... get them all at one time. It would all be in one repository. Yes. yes, it's very similar to what the Woodbridge Board of Ed has been doing um, since I was a board member there in 2006. I think we bought into a system called eMeeting, and they're still currently using it. So mm -hmm. when the agenda yep. is published, you just click and open the PDFs to view right. them. Right. right. Yeah, it's so very convenient. So even if, like, Friday Jerry sends the, you know, the big packet, and yeah. then Monday and Tuesday as they dribble in, they would dribble into that place so we, when we come here, they're all there instead One of place. us going to three or four different. Right, and you can cont you can go back and just click on once right. there's an item there to open that yeah. up. You can yeah. also, as a board member, you would have the ability to keep notes on them. So if you have a tablet or even mm -hmm. your phone and you want to jot in notes on the mm -hmm. side of your packet, mm -hmm. it stays in the system so you can go back to your own notes. Mm -hmm. No one else can see costly? them. It is not that costly compared to the uh, Beecher system. I think it has more features. It's similar cost. Is it a license? It's software it. as a service, so, so, um, so you pay a, a monthly license. It's a yearly, yearly, yearly it's a three-year contract. Um, okay. There's a possibility of, um, uh, you know, doing it as a as a pilot, which would have no obligation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we're exploring, and we're going to. So in other words, check it out for a short time, not paying. Yeah, and sixty days, walk away if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, All right. uh, free pilot sounded like a good price tag. Right. I have a question about the recycling, Sheila. Sure. So um, once we actually get um, more meat behind it in terms of what we're really asking people to do, yeah. um, is there a way other than posting on the website that we can really get that information out to town residents? So we have a tremendous partnership happening at Beecher Road School where the parents there who are mm -hmm. interested in us, they're on their green team at Beecher. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that probably the quickest route into households is through children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, Beecher's green team is mm -hmm. really focused on, on getting everyone kind of trained as to what goes in, mm -hmm. what does not go into mm -hmm. your recycling mm -hmm. bin. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's one avenue in, and I know they've got some activities planned in the fall. We're going right. to carefully coordinate with them so that the town message and the Beecher message are the same message. Because okay. uh, I think if we had some additional, um, I'll just call them a brochure, mm -hmm. um, we could take them to different organizations that are very interested in this. I know having a bunch yeah. at Masaro Farm would be great because there are, you know, about 150 different families that come there every week. Um, and yeah. all those people mm -hmm. are interested in recycling, composting, all those types of things. Yeah. So um, I would just suggest that we think about that. That's a great idea. I, I, I would think that the Sustainability Committee would like to be the ambassadors of that. So if we that could would make a list of yeah. community groups that we sure. want to go sure. to. Sure. I know um, Laura Ferranti from Coopop was out uh -huh. on the green yesterday with this flyer walking up to people and handing it oh, out that's to say, right. you've got to come to this workshop that's coming right, up. So right. we are doing the roving ambassador yep. routine. Okay. Great. 
properties in terms of how they recycle and what they're doing? Good question. It's yeah. um, because I mean that's a big yeah. significant piece of it and that's actually a uh, yeah they use a challenge. Um, different haulers and maybe some mm -hmm. of the same haulers so we, we would uh, work with uh, Kelly Hamill as a recycling coordinator for Public Works so I can be in touch with her to find mm -hmm. out. Um, I've already asked her if there is any material at her and Warren uh, material to inform the commercial haulers because mm -hmm. we just set that fee for the commercial haulers hasn't gone into effect yet. Um, but as the commercial haulers are dealing with their customers, do they need more information? We could make these available. So there's a whole series of resources on what's in, what's out, what's in, what's out of the blue bin, essentially. Um, there's a lot of existing resources that we can point people to. Right. I also think there's some ordinance type of information that's going to impact all this. So it would be kind of nice community? to tie it in, in the business community. So mm -hmm. we're going to coordinate with so. EDC maybe for mm -hmm. that. Okay. Okay, and then on, on your agenda, you have uh, Mary Ellen LaRocca asked that we um, include in the Board of Selectmen packet information about the Youth Services Grant submission. Um, they do this every year, so it's, it's not two years. every two years. Right, <laughs> right 2017 was the last one. Um, and it is a similar grant, except this year uh, the state has uh, changed the agency that it's being submitted to. So she just would like to have permission to um, complete this grant and prepare it for Beth's signature. Somebody want to make a motion that we authorize? Well, we need to. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Just out of curiosity, as far as a, is there a, uh, a match, of, a municipal match associated with this? Or? There is, and it is already included in their budget, Thank the you. human services budget. The town, uh, the town subsidizes about $58,000 a year for youth services. Thank so you. That comes from that. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Item 13 is acknowledge receipt of the town clerk's report. You have in your packet um, the annual uh, report from July 1, 18 through June 30th, 2019. State $591,195.13. Town $226,959.95. And you also have the monthly report from June 1, 18. I'm sorry. June 1, 19th through June 30th, 19th, state 89,917.13, and the town 27,822.38. I'll make a motion that we accept the um, reports from the town clerk's office. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Item 14 is minutes. Um, the first set of minutes, which you had a while ago, I think these went out on time <laughs> last week. Wednesday, May 29th, uh, special Board of Selectmen meeting, special Board of Finance meeting of May 29th, 2019. I'll make a motion we approve them as submitted. Is there a second? Somebody second it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, any discussion on this? I just thought um, there was a comment made during the, the during the meeting that the this amount was, we have been discussing it for pretty much significant portion of the year. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was, it, it just was important to mention that it wasn't something that was new or something along those lines. I wasn't sure if that, if you guys felt that was worth even mentioning in there. So you want to add a sentence or a comment about? Uh, no, if it's really just wanted to bring it up and see what, what the thought was. Did we, did we talk about it at the meeting? Because these are minutes of that meeting. I can't right, remember. Right, it was brought up. Yes. It was brought up? Yes. Okay. So maybe you could go back, Jerry, I'm sorry, and listen to that sentence when it was brought up, and we'll add that to the minutes at Mika's request. Okay. Anything else? Um, with that, I'll make a motion we approve as amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We'll change the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank I'm staying. Oh, okay. Of course. Thanks, Sandy. Um, next set of minutes are June 4th, special meeting, discussion and action on proposals for the former Country Club property. 
I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as submitted. Is there a second? Thank you. Any changes or discussion on this one? Okay. Brian St. Pierre, I'm sorry, just Whoop. just that one thing about he specifically indicated that his his um, he felt his offer was 5.1, and it was corrected. So, well, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not finding it now. <laughs> I thought I read it in there. It's Jerry. in it's in the summary of his notes. It's on page four. two. It's on page two. That's what yes, purchase a 64. Mm -hmm. Right. He did? He did. Yeah. After we questioned him, first he started with 5.1. Yeah, he then said, we did questioned say 5.1. And then he came back to 5.1. And then we okay. questioned it because his proposal. Got it. Yep. I thought in, I didn't. I don't remember him saying 5.1 until. I thought we it was afterwards. Him. But. In the meeting? I thought he said something when we questioned him, mm -hmm. but he his lawyer sent me a. Well, that could be. I, don't think. Think. I mean, uh, I think he, the, the minutes should reflect the 5.1 yeah. that he said. That's what he said. Okay, he said that was so clarified. Because I listened to the meeting, because I had a terrible time trying to hear what was being said. <laughs> trying to write me, trying to write down. It's, um, there, it's, it's not what I heard, but that's okay. If it's there. If it's well, there, it's there. We okay. could we could say something like um, at the beginning instead of where it says his proposal we could say he referenced the details of his proposal, May twelve seventeenth two thousand nineteen which includes five point four million. Because I thought he agreed that night that he said. That's what's on the website as his proposal. Yeah. No. Well, that was the old proposal. December seventeenth. Yeah. Right. He definitely had something. He definitely gave us something. But at the meeting, he said 5.1. He started with 5.1, and then I think he went to 5.4. At the meeting? I think so. I'm not okay. sure. I don't remember Do you, you well, want to? All right. To listen all right. again. Yes, we'll, we'll check on that. And, and, uh, but just, just and it, okay. sounds good. Reporting so we'll leave those sit. Did, we'll let those he, sit. His lawyer did agree. He does have a letter of intent. Subsequently, to yeah. It says 5.4. So that's that's right. right. Yeah. But, but the, the minutes, minutes are the, have to reflect that. Exactly. Yes. I don't want these minutes because this is so very important. Right. Going into any record. Right. We're just going to not vote on those until you confirm. Right. Okay, right. good. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you so much. Um, June 10th, uh, Board of Selectmen Special Meeting. I'll make a motion. We approve them. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion or changes on these? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thanks. And lastly, um, Dwight Rowland, who is a new member of the Board of Selectmen, uh, sent his resignation letter. So I will make a motion that we accept his resignation with regret. Is there a second? Well. Well, it's from, not really from, a from recreation. From recreation. <laughs> from recreation. <laughs> from oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, good point. Well, that was good. Thank you. Goodness. No, no, no. You're right. I thought it. Yeah, resignation. Dwight Roll and recreation. I should have read that ahead of time. So sorry. Everybody's packing up around me, and I'm getting nervous. It's like I got to get this done. Well, then get it done. Let's I'm go. trying to. <laughs> Thank you. So we will accept Dwight Rowland's resignation from Recreation Commission with regret. And um, yes. I guess that's it. Motion to adjourn. I don't think we just accept. Yeah, we just we accept, accept it. it. Yeah. 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 With regret. Second the motion to adjourn. There you go. <laughs> Who are you guys? Okay. There you go. Um, it's non-debatable, so we are adjourned I'm at seven o'clock. I'm not sure there'd be any debate. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.